Turning now to illegal immigration and its impact on schools, joining me now is Michelle Exner, Senior Advisor at Parents Defending Education, to discuss the organization's recent investigation into how the influx of migrant children is impacting D.C. public schools. Michelle Exner, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jack. So you've looked into the challenges that D.C.'s public schools are facing uh, with the influx of illegal immigrants. Um, can explain what you found. Absolutely. So through public records requests, Parents Defending Education was able to obtain and read through um, dozens of pages of email correspondence from basically 2022 to 2023. And what we saw was, I think what we can all assume is happening, right, with the massive influx of, of migrants and the bo ongoing border crisis is, one, teachers and administrators are strained for resources. They don't have the staff to accommodate English learners in their schools. Several schools are at capacity. So that means that children are, the, the teacher-student ratio is, is off the charts. It's not adequate for ch children to get uh, a good education. And also there is a specific number in there that almost a million dollars um, was being allocated to bring in new staff just to accommodate this influx of new migrant students. Wow. How are they um, balancing the uh, new migrant students who don't speak English with the um, teachers? Uh, or do they have enough teachers who don't speak speak those other languages. When we were reading through these correspondences, it was clear in, I would say, the majority of instances, the teachers and staff, they're just doing what they can, right? They're being compassionate humans who are just trying to do what they can within their means to help these students, right? So whether it's finding the resources, bringing in new staff. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's just not fair. It's not fair to them that the federal government had, has failed to this magnitude and has allowed a crisis to continue to fuel um, basically since 2021. As far as the current students now uh, in D.C. schools, how is it affecting them? So I think we can assume that they're not getting the education that they deserve to have, right? The families deserve to know that their children are, are getting all of the math, reading, and science, all of those skills that they need in that particular grade. And I think what is more alarming, right, is when we consider that students are still trying to climb out of that massive education loss from COVID, and now the federal government is, again, shoving this other crisis, other options obstacle in front of them. And I also think, Jack, it's important to note that what's happening in D.C. is really just a snapshot of what's happening across the country, right? You've had four years of the border crisis. Basically, every state has become uh, a border state, right? You have New York City alone has spent $1.45 billion on the migrant crisis. Denver City alone, um, since 2022, has spent $180 million. And in Massachusetts, $580 million from 2022 to just the beginning beginning of this year. So expect those numbers to continue to grow. And again, that's just going to trickle down to every school. And we have Parents Defending Education has examples about how these schools in these districts have been impacted. What was the motivation behind all of this? Was there a particular instance where that you saw a problem um, and then you had to reach out and do this investigation? I think most Americans probably over the past couple of years have been looking at the, uh, the, the problem and saying it's not just happening along the border, right? It's not just happening in these select communities. Um, the, the issue is trickling down to impacting, negatively impacting sectors across across our, our society, right? Um, whether it's hospitals, whether it's schools, whether it's just general infrastructure. And so we, we just... We, we knew, right, we knew, of course, the schools have to be impacted because there's uh, thousands of children that are coming coming through as well. And so, um, and I also think what, what spurred it as well was all these articles about the extra funding that needed to go in. I mean, the number I gave you from $180 million in Denver alone, that's one-tenth of the city's budget. So think about that. That's money that's not, that's coming out of people's paycheck in those specific districts. That's not helping the constituents there. It's not helping the students. Is there something that members of Congress can do to help uh, counteract it? Absolutely. So I think just continue to talk about it, right? Not not in these big kind of macro uh, perspective of, oh, we have a border crisis. No, it's, it's how, how is it impacting your community? How is it impacting the schools, the hospitals, all of, all of the resources that your constituents, that their constituents are using back in their districts and states? It's to talk about that in a way that American uh, American people are going to take a step back and be like, wow, this, this, is, this is not just some faraway problem that's happening along the border of Texas. No, this is this is in our backyard now, right? And I think the problem there is that cities and states, they're just not 
there is no amount of resources that is going to, to, to help continue to fix this problem. The only problem is for uh, the federal government to take action. Um, and I think we can continue to push for that for members of Congress to, to really vo voice their concerns and keep in touch with their constituents. Michelle Exner, thank you very much for your insight here. Thanks for having me, Jack.